Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. We've covered Ibanez, we've covered Gibson. Now it's time for a company that I'll admit I'm a lot less familiar with. So Schecter is one of the largest names in guitar. They've got a massive number of fans. They've got a huge following. And I say this a lot, so I apologize if you heard it a million times, but I've never quite got it when it comes to Schecter. They always seem nice, but there are a lot of nice guitars. So I've always wondered why Schecter specifically has so many dedicated players. And since I've got a couple of Schecter reviews coming up, I thought I'd go straight to the source you guys. I asked you on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook about why you like these guitars so much. So without further ado, here are your answers as to why Schecter guitars are just better. Point number one, variety. Now this is something that I only recently learned about Schecter, right? Like Schecter's a relatively large brand. Pretty much everyone into metal has that one guitarist friend with a Schecter C1 or a Banshee of some kind. They've got a double cut guitar for just about every occasion of metal, but they also make a pretty fine looking single cut a few of them, in fact, including an LP special type thing with P90s. They've got a pretty sick E-style guitar with a Floyd and Staniac. There's the Sun Valley line of shreddy strats. They've even got special edition double cuts for non-metal applications. There's the entire retro collection that like, where has this been hiding? Did you know that Schecter did hollow bodies with the Corsairs and the Coupe? Until very recently, I did not. They also make this crazy offset thing called the Spitfire. They use Bigsby's quite regularly, just to name three. They've got one on said Spitfire, a Corsair Custom, and a PT Fastback 2, which is like a T-style guitar with a four-arm bevel. They've got the semi-hollow TS with lipstick pickups. There's a 12-string version and a Bigsby version 2. Then the Art Deco-inspired Ultra 3s. Like for this YouTube channel, I'm looking at guitars online all the time, and I had no idea that these were a thing until very recently. They're obviously most well known for their metal guitars and that makes up the main bulk of their current production lineup, but that's not even close to all that they do. It's kind of a weird one. For a relatively large and well-known brand, a lot of their models really fly under the radar. Like a lot of people write Schecter off if they're looking for anything but a metal axe. I was one of those people. And it turns out that really shouldn't be the case. And related to that, I guess it's like a sub point for variety is their selection for lefties. I can't think of a single other large brand that treats the lefty community as well as Schecter does. You know, poor lefty guitars. We talk about cool guitars on the channel every week and it's so sad when you realize that lefties won't be able to play the vast majority of them. Not only that, but when a brand actually makes a lefty model, chances are it's in black and only black? Well, you know what? Not Schecter. They've got the Super Shredder with a Floyd and Sustaniac. They've got the Apocalypse series, the Silver Mountain series, a couple of their more popular artist models like the Sinister Gates, the Nick Johnston, the Keith Merrill MK3 are all available in left-handed. And not just one, I'm talking multiple colors. Zacky Vengeance, obviously, he's actually left-handed, so that makes sense. Floyd's, seven strings, eight strings, multi-scales, Fishman Fluence, Evertunes, everything is here, and usually more than just one option for each of those two. Obviously the color selection is a little more limited for lefties, but compared to any other major brand, Schecter is where it's at. Point two. Something that kept coming up over and over and over again is Schecter's reputation for providing a high level of spec, quality, and consistency for the price relative to other big name brands. Or they don't have the specs you're looking for, or they're not affordable. Hi dog. And I was amazed at how often this answer showed up for the Schecter question. Just over and over and over again. It's clear that within the community, Schecter has a reputation for relatively high quality and consistency at every price point that they compete in. Those were pretty much the exact words. You know, and at the same time, this one kind of surprised me, to be honest, because while well, for the most part I agree, the last couple of series that I covered in Ask a Fish episodes, the Silver Mountains, the Banshee Mocks, the Banshee GTs, there've been a lot of complaints that they're too expensive for what they are, which I think is kind of ridiculous, but anyways. And I will say out of the now four Schecters that I've had the pleasure for taking for an in-depth spin on the channel, the first one, the KM7 MK2 FRS, did have the bridge pickup falling out. It was an easy enough fix, just screw it back in, even though it was a little low. But for the most part, Schecter, if you look through their lineup, spec-wise, they compete solidly on price 
with any of the major brands. Think on par with LTD, which also has a reputation for great bang for buck. But it's not just about specs. From your guys' comments, Schechter has a reputation for making sure guitars get delivered with good setups, decent action, proper intonation, and the like. I would like to point out that does sometimes depend a lot on the retailer. Guitar Center, for example, ships guitars still sealed in their original boxes. Sweetwater has their 55 point inspection. Toman has something similar with inspection on guitars above a certain price point before they're shipped out. But overall, Schechter has a reputation for somehow giving their guitars the best chance to arrive to customers in great playing condition. Next point, so yeah, we covered that there's more to Schecter than just the metal guitars, but that's still very much the main focus of their overall guitar lineup. And number three, while you guys pointed out that that is the case, they aren't overly shreddy spec. And what I mean by that is, okay, take Ibanez, for example. Your standard Ibanez RG, you've got a super slim D-shaped neck, a flat 16-inch fingerboard radius, large frets, the shreddy Schecters, Try saying that 10 times fast. They have specs that aren't as extreme. So let's take the Banshee GTFR that I unboxed a few days ago. Also has extra jumbo frets, but then the fingerboard radius is 14 inches. So in between an Ibanez and a Gibson. And then the neck, even though it's listed as an extra thin U on Schecter's site, it's not super overly thin, like you find on a lot of hyper-focused, shred-tastic guitars. There's still a reasonable amount of neck material. So you guys actually said it best, they're a good stepping stone, a good gateway drug into the world of shreddy guitars. Even as someone who prefers the dad guitars, I've never found Schecter's uncomfortable or even that weird to play. So that, combined with reasonable affordability, makes Schecter a great choice for a first shred-oriented guitar. Number four, Sustainiacs. At this point, Schechter pretty much owns the Sustainiac game. I know I mentioned it earlier in the video, but if you don't know what a Sustainiac is, it's basically a built-in Ebo in pickup form. Unlimited note or feedback sustain, it's a ton of fun with the Floyd, and no other major brand utilizes the Sustainiac to the same extent that Schechter does. Not even close. Right now, Schechter has 20 in-production models with Sustainiacs. Fender, just one with the Ed O'Brien signature Stratocaster. If that is still in production, I'm not sure if that was limited edition or not. Gibson and PRS, meanwhile, and I'm including Epiphone in that, straight zero. Goose egg. Just no Sustainiacs at all. Which is a massive shame because they're super fun. Meanwhile, it's almost surprising when Schechter releases a new modern series without some sort of Sustainiac presence. <laughs> Yeah, it's something you don't get with any other major brand. Now with Schecter, if you want a Sustainiac, you've got a ton of choice. And the last point has to do with artists. But unlike the last two videos with Ibanez and Gibson, where you guys pointed to the full artist roster, with Schecter, there were just two names in particular that kept popping up. Sinister Gates and Keith Merrill. Sinister Gates, obviously the lead guitarist for the massively successful Avenged Sevenfold. Keith Merrill, a huge name in production and audio engineering. One of the OG YouTube guitar guys did a lot of work with Seymour Duncan, now he's with Fishman. Both have an incredible amount of visibility, they've inspired so many players to pick up the guitar, and both names are pretty much synonymous with Schechter. Sinister Gates playing is so clean, it's so tasty. Keith Merrow's riffs are mean and evil as hell. Both their signature models are super nice. The Sinister one is a little BC Richie for my taste but it definitely stands out. And Keith Merrill just has great taste in guitar design, in my opinion. All those factors combined, it's no wonder you guys kept bringing these guys up specifically in the comments. And the last point isn't a part of the main list, but I thought that it deserved an honorable mention at least. And that goes to Schecter's use of abalone. Early, mid 2000s, even 2010s, abalone binding, abalone inlays, that's where it was at. And Schecter was instrumental in popularizing that look, even on affordable models. That point didn't make the main list because abalone binding's kinda gone out of style. Maybe BC Rich would disagree with you, but you know, it's not as relevant as it was a few years ago. Still, it was one of the things Schecter was really known for and what set them apart from other brands. <laughs> So 
So those were your most popular answers as to why Schecter guitars are just better. Do you agree with the list? Are there any that you would have added? Well, this is an ongoing series. There will be more brands covered, so make sure you're following me on social media if you want your voice to be heard. Especially Instagram, that's the one that I check the most. Let me know which one you want next. There's been a lot of requests for Epiphone, BC Rich, PRS. As I said earlier in the video, there's a lot of nice guitars out there. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It's a big red button down there and it actually really helps out. Make sure to hit the bell for notifications as well. YouTube likes to see a high notification percentage number. But Discord server link in the description. That's the best for actual notifications when I upload. Patreon and merch to support the channel also down below. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.